Thank you very much, Ruth. Um, our next speaker is Li Fan Zhang. Li Fan Zhang is a PhD student in art history at Rhodes University, and also a member of the Arts of Africa and Global South Research Program. Her uh, her talk will be is, her talk is titled "Between Mating and Map: Zambian Artist Martin Abasi Fidi's Artistic Practices and His Experiences." in China. So the floor is yours, uh, Li Fang. You have 15 to 20 minutes. Thanks. Uh, good day, everyone. Thank you for being here with us. So my presentation today focuses on the late Zambian artist Martin Piri, who was studying in China for six years during the uh, 1980s, from 1982 to 1988. Actually, I shift a little, a little bit from the, what I promised in the abstract. I'm going to tell a story from my own perspective and experience in my presentation today. And this uh, mini symposium's title, Distances and Intimacies, really speak to that. I want to start with one moment. Uh, in the evening of 25th May last year, I was sitting cross-legged in my room at an Airbnb in Lusaka, the capital city of Zambia. Just one step in front of me was a showcase dusty and damp and with a very musty smell. Inside the showcase were Martin Peary's certificates, album sketchbooks, uh, drawings, and even a few Chinese landscape paintings. But it is not just a container of archives. It was Martin's personal belongings, a showcase that he carried around 30 years ago uh, when he was traveling in China, in Zambia, and between China and Zambia. And this showcase would stay with me until the next day. It was tied by a plastic rope. I didn't open the showcase, scared of insects crawling out. For almost half an hour, I was looking at the showcase, sitting in silence without any movement. Everything was so dim and heavy. I didn't know how to make sense of that moment and make sense of, of my complex emotion. Why was I sitting here with Martin Peary's personal showcase in my room? Why was I so emotional when I saw the condition of the showcase sorry, during the day? Uh, to an extent, I really behaved with a very bad manners. Okay, to clarify that doesn't happen a lot. Um, but how should I make sense? Or how should I account for, for that being a researcher? And what does that mean? Uh, to a research. I was quite confused at that moment. Why is it not Sorry. So I would call it a moment of distance and intimacy. The distance is in both space and time. It is the geographical distance between China and Zambia and the temporal distance of almost 30 years. The intimacy is the crossings in space and time with journeys, com conversations, documents, and all other engagements to bring this showcase and also myself to a place where we were unlikely to be. In the center of everything is the absence of Martin Peary because of his death. Here I draw from our historian Jonah Grabsky's idea of absence as a productive space. It is the absence that makes possible this research and this moment of distance and intimacy or all the moments in my travels, interviews and archiving process. In relation to the connections and hidden networks in the South, I push further the idea of absence as a productive space, not just for interpretive undertakings or archival projects, but also a space of re-encountering and re-networking. Uh, let me take you back to the beginning of the story. In 1982, Martin Piri set up to Beijing from Lusaka after he received a Chinese government scholarship for a BA degree at the Central Academy of Fine Art, uh, Zhongguo Meiyuan. He then studied in Beijing for six years with a one year program in Chinese language and five years degree uh, majoring in sculpture at the School of Plastic Arts at CAFA. He was trained with very strict, realistic style at the sculpture department. He returned to Zambia in 1988, the same year he graduated. During the 10 years before he passed away in 1997, as an artist, he left a few 
uh, realistic sculpture like this one uh, with the technique he learned in China. And also a few then controversial artworks like this one, which is in the shape of a coffin with the sculpture of his own face. Because of these experimental sculptures, he was considered as a pioneer in conceptual art in Zambia, which might be related to what he saw in China during 1980s, as it was a time uh, when a lot of art movements were taking place. He was also a lecturer at Evelyn Home College in Lusaka. He introduced the professional teaching system of realistic style to the sculpture department. This is an image of his hand-drawn textbook. Uh, and Emmanuel is one of his students who inherited his realistic skills and he did the second branch schedule in the country. He was also the founder of Zambia National Visual Arts Council. This is the uh, biggest art organization and it once really played a very significant role in Zambia art. It is still alive today. And his two students who work closely with him at the early years of, during the early years of Varg, they say that Varg is very socialist considering the scale, the vision, the form of uh, organization and also the context when it was established. Um, I got to know about my team period in 2018 when I was doing my master's degree on the engagement of Africa-China relationship in contemporary African art. I have a chapter on him and I finished my thesis at the end of 2019. My PhD research now is on an entirely different topic but for some reason, actually for every reason, I decided to continue this research uh, independently myself. It was, it was quite simple at the beginning. Why? Sorry. It was quite simple at the beginning. I just wanted to put something together, like a small digital archive to share with the family, Vogue and other people who are interested in us. I really appreciate their trust. And since then, I have been collecting materials and talking to people time by time. Now, uh, this is the screenshot of a file on my hard drive. And let me now share a few moments of tracing and encountering Martin Piru with his physical absence in this process. So in 2018, I met a few of the students in Lusaka that gave me insights into Martin's work, his teaching, and also how visual arts Council was funded. I also met her brother who shared with me about how he grew up and how he passed away. Most of these are memories from 20 and 30 years ago. And what is in common is that all of them have the utmost respect for Martin. I then got in touch with his stepson, Tom Piri, and met him at Challenger, where he lived and worked from. Tom showed me two albums and a few documents, which are actually from the showcase I mentioned above, but I didn't know about the showcase at that time. These are two images from that day when I was re-photographing the pictures in the album. In the same space, there was a decaying sculpture by Martin, by Martin Piri, among a few other works by him. And these two are images at Evering Home College where Martin was lecturing. The left one was Martin working on his sculpture and the one on the right was the very same sculpture, but unfinished. I took the picture when I was there. So with the materials I collected from this trip, I wrote my chapter on Martin Piri. I was quite lucky that after I submitted, I managed to get in touch with one of his classmates in China. So in the last days of 2019, uh, right before the pandemic, I was on my way back home for spring festival. I fly from Johannesburg and my destination was Shanghai. Uh, but I did something crazy when the flight landed in Beijing for domestic transfer. I talked to the airline staff and paid my and paid some money to cancel the flight from Beijing to Shanghai and also to make sure that this doesn't affect my return flight back to South Africa. So on 30th December 2019, I met one of Martin's classmates in Beijing and saw the space, actually the space where Martin used to attend classes. In my conversation with him, he shared some memories with me about their school time back in the 1980s. 
And besides that, we also make plans for further conversations, collecting archives, and also meeting with Martin's other classmates. But then it came into the pandemic and this project was delayed in uncertainty. So until April 2021, when I went for my PhD research in Zimbabwe, I decided to take a trip to Zambia again after that. So I spent a few days at Visual Arts Council, digging in archives to search for anything that is relevant, photos, meeting minutes, or even a signature of my team period. I also met a few other students of my team, including Lawrence and Agnes Yongboy in Livingstone. I was actually staying with them in their family and the conversations about my team period uh, popped up time to time. I also met a student, Mr. Chishimba, who is the director of the National Gallery of Zambia in Livingstone, which is built on the land that Martin Piri acquired for the development of art in Livingstone when he was alive. And one of Martin's work is also at a gallery brought there from Lusaka. Then it came to the showcase. I only plan to properly digitalize the albums and sound documents that I, that I knew at that time when I was looking for Tom Piri. He moved to a place which was quite far from the city Lusaka with two artist friends, Martin's nephew, Martin's son, Bissalon Piri, and another friend of them who worked with Tom. We drove, I think, over two hours out of the city and parked the car in the middle of nowhere. And then we walked for maybe another 10 to 20 minutes to finally get to Tom's place. When we opened the showcase, I saw much, much more than I expected in the showcase, but they were not in a good condition. We took it from Tom's place to Lusaka, planning to dry up to document and to archive them. And Martin Shukes were staying with me at the lodge that night. Um, this was the next day. In the same space, Martin Piri used to come every day. We worked on his archives and lexes from early morning to late night. As the chairperson of VARC, Martin used to organize events, attend meetings, engage with the young artists in this space. Also, he also swept the floor himself. And in this very same space, his son, his son Bissalon was working together with me to organize and digitalize the archives. Bissalon also shared with me his own art practices and his childhood time spending with his father, reminded by any materials we, ca we came across. And artist Dari Mwaba also joined us to help later, later during the day. Two days later, uh, I got the material and Bissalon made this box himself to store these archives from the showcase and also artworks we collected from other places. The showcase is also inside the box. Now it is kept somewhere we all trust and waiting for us to make a, a proper plan. In the image you can see Bissalon's hands are holding the box and my handwriting uh, on the box. Okay, forgive that. Um, let me quickly wrap up now. So going back to the idea of absence as a productive space, uh, what can we produce from this space then? It is a space for interpretive practices around and about Martin Piri. In those interviews I conducted, people called their memory, recall their memory from two decades ago. They might also insert their own stories into the narratives, interreferencing with other people or documents. These ghostly stories together with other archives gave shape to the narratives of and around Martin Piri in relation to the time, space, and people of today. Martin Piri's experience of study in China also invites the question of more possible hidden engagements and connections in the South, which might open up spaces to understand artistic practices in Africa and beyond with different frameworks of reference. And now the archives have been put into a box locked by the network around Martin Piri or around his absence is somehow developing. Through my route, tracing the artist route, I encountered the absence and the presence of the artist crossing space and time encountering and re-encountering people who once were connected with him in different ways. And new archives and networks are also created 
occasionally in this ongoing process. Therefore, it is not just a process of bringing out the hidden network, but also a process of networking and re-networking and maybe of self-becoming. Uh, we will see. Thank you.